Hello, my name is Rashawn Carlton, Director of Athletics. We are excited for another year here at Penn State Harrisburg Athletics. We know that you all have great things in store for this upcoming academic and athletic year. As with every year, it will be very important for you to follow all the rules and regulations, policies and procedures set forth by the university and the NCAA. As a member of our athletic teams, you will be an absolute standout on campus. However, this means holding yourself to a higher standard as you represent the blue and white. What's going on? I'm Alex White. I'm a track and field athlete for uh, Penn State Harrisburg. I'm a jumper. Uh, I graduated last spring with a degree in project and supply chain management, and I'm coming back for my last season as a grad student going for my MBA. And I'm just here to talk to you about a few points to keep your head on straight academically. And uh, as long as your academics are in check, then your athletics should be uh, heading in the right direction. So the first point we have here is your academics should be your number one priority at Penn State Harrisburg. From personal experience, the more you focus on your academics, the better your athletics will be just because you're going to be that genuinely in-depth person and you're going to be more focused overall. Secondly, make sure you're in contact with your professors and let them know you're a student athlete. Professors love student athletes. They'll go out of their way if you're uh, maybe not making some requirements or you have a game or something like that or a track meet. They are, they're pretty good at going around that stuff. They also like to know how you're doing. Like if you're succeeding, they're They'll congratulate you and it's great to make that relationship with your professors. The third point here is uh, take advantage of resources like Learning Center and also reach out to Ac Academic Success Coordinator Angela Burkett for support with the Athletic Department. So if you're having any issues, you can go straight to the Learning Center, which is in the SEC, or you can just contact Angela and she'll uh, get you in the right direction. Hi everybody, I'm Coach Angela Burkett from the Women's Volleyball Program and I'm also here to support you in regards to academics. So some of the questions that I normally get from students have to do with possibly advisor questions. Um, I'm not necessarily the person that would help you schedule classes because your advisor is more suited to do that, but I'm definitely kind of the back support. So if you have any questions, uh, please reach out. Obviously your academics are number one and we're here to be able to support you. Now, as far as uh, academic advising is concerned, communicate with your academic advisor to make sure that your schedule fits with your academic needs. Make sure you don't have classes during your practice time. And if you do, hopefully they can help you for next semester to make sure you're not getting into trouble like that. Or maybe they can help you find another class early this semester. Another point, if you don't have an academic advisor, be sure to contact Vicki Syke in a, the advising center and tell her that you're a student athlete and her office is located in room 204 in the SEC. But yeah, if you're a freshman or transfer student and if you uh, see me walking around, don't be afraid to say hi or if you have questions, ask me. Uh, I'm available. Uh, I know other senior athletes or upperclassmen will also be willing to help out because we're one big family here at Penn State. So uh, good luck, have fun, and uh, I'll see you around. Hey everyone, my name's Alexa. I'm a sophomore, I'm from New Jersey, and I play volleyball for the women's volleyball team. So I'm here to talk to you about uh, priority registration. So be sure to take advantage of the priority scheduling. And as student athletes, you are permitted to schedule classes for the spring and fall semesters before the rest of the student body, which is really helpful because you get the first pick of classes before everybody else is and you won't be kicked out of a class that you possibly need. So class scheduling conflicts as well. Um, it allows you to minimize conflicts with games and practice schedules. You are permitted to miss class for games, but you cannot miss class for practice. Schedule early to avoid conflict and take advantage of all your academic opportunities. If you see me here on campus, please say hi. My Instagram is Infinity Pandas. My Snapchat is Alexa the Henry. My Twitter is also Alexa the Henry. My social media is just fantastic. Like, you should just go follow it. Hello, my name is Alexandria, but I'm known as Allie. I'm a part of the cross country and track and field women's team. I will be an incoming sophomore. I'll be talking to you guys about class attendance and times management. 
for class attendance, everybody, you're not gonna be able to go to every single class. It's understandable, but it's important for you to go to class because it's not like high school where you miss a day and you can catch up. It's not that simple, especially if you, you know, if you're not vocal in the class, you don't have any friends, you can't just text a friend like, oh, what do we do in class today? You have to see the professor after class, during his um, office hours. It's just going to class makes life a lot easier. And times management. In high school, they always stress it, stress it, stress it, but you don't understand it until you're in that situation. For me, I was, you know, procrastinator and I still am, but it's not, it's not good. You got to get out the habit of, you know, you have an essay due on Friday, but you had it for two weeks, but you wait until Friday to do it. If it's writing, you don't have enough time to proofread. Me, I used to send my assignments to my mom and my sister. They would read over it. But if it's, 10 o'clock at night and it's due at 11.59, they're probably asleep. So, and they're gonna tell me that I should have been had it done. Also with times management, if you do struggle with it, don't be ashamed, get help, seek help at the learning center. There is plenty of people out here that's willing to help you, that is their job. Don't make it more stressful than it needs to be. Like I said, I'm Allie. If you see me around campus, feel free to ask me any questions. I am willing to help you and I'm willing to make sure that your college journey is the best thing ever. Hi, my name is Samantha Weaver. I'm a junior at Penn State Harrisburg. I'm studying both communications and kinesiology and I am on the softball team. So twice a semester, we have a student athlete progress report. Uh, the athletic department and head coaches, they just check in with your professors to monitor your academic progress. Your coaches want you to succeed in athletics, but they also want you to achieve your academic goals and support you on your road to graduation. So it's a good way to touch base with both your professors and your coaches just to make sure you're on the right track. We also have counseling and psychological services. Uh, sometimes as a student athlete, things can be hard, especially if you have a really rigorous schedule or maybe you work a job or you commute to school. These are free services available on campus for a variety of issues, including mental health, abuse, and personal issues. The office is located in room 205 of the Student Enrichment Center. There's phone numbers for a crisis line, a text line, a police service, and police services are also available online for contact with someone at any time. Also, if you see any of us student athletes on campus, you can always reach out to us. We're here to help. So yeah, thank you. Next, we're going to take a moment to discuss the importance of Title IX and sexual violence prevention. Title IX is a federal law, and it states that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance, and Penn State University falls under this category. Dr. Wanda Knight will be the point person for Title IX for athletics. Dr. Knight is the Assistant Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and she's also our Athletics Diversity and Inclusion designee. Dr. Knight can be reached via email at wbk10 at psu.edu, or at our office phone, 717-948-6016. In addition to Dr. Knight being a resource, each team and coach will receive training throughout the season. Sexual violence prevention is a main focus of the NCAA, our campus, and Penn State University as a whole. Please pay attention to the concept of consent as explained in the following two videos. Throughout 13 Reasons Why, sexual assault is a common theme. Some characters questioned how their own decisions impacted the outcome. Some characters ignored the signs of consent. Consent is a mutual and voluntary agreement between people to engage in sexual activity. Yes. That's OK. I'm comfortable with that. There are many ways to give consent. Physical or nonverbal cues are important to pay attention to. They may let someone know you're willing to go to the next level. Or not. And consent should happen every time. Saying yes to a kiss doesn't mean saying yes to everything else. And at any point. Any point. Any point. You can change your mind and say no. Asking, is this okay? 
can let you know if you have consent. Ignoring no. Silence. Assuming flirting or kissing means something more. Making sexual advances when someone is under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Talking them into a sexual act out of fear or violence. Just ask, is this okay? Pay attention to not only what they say in response, but to nonverbal cues and clarify consent. Ask for consent. Every time. Every time. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, find a trusted adult or go to 13reasonswhy.info for more resources. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my God, I would love a cup of tea. Thank you. Then you know they want a cup of tea. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, then you could make them a cup of tea or not, but be aware they might not drink it. And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important part, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you are entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say no thank you, then don't make them tea at all. Just don't make them tea. Don't make them drink tea. Don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea. They just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes, please. That's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. Sure, that's kind of annoying as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea, now they don't. Some people change their mind in the time that it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea, and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind. And you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they're unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea. And they can't answer the question, do you want tea? Because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea. And they said yes. But in the time it took you to boil the kettle, brew the tea, and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down. Make sure the unconscious person is safe. And this is the important part again. Don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away. Make sure they're safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it going, but you wanted tea last week. Or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat going, but you wanted tea last night. But if you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you're able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand it when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. Hey everybody, I'm Luke Myers. I play men's soccer and baseball here at Penn State Harrisburg. Going on to eligibility and academic policy, you must be a full-time student to participate in intercollegiate athletics, which is a minimum of 12 credits. If you drop below 12 credits, you are ineligible. The charts shown here list the minimum number of credits and minimum GPA you'll need to complete and maintain to remain eligible. Good luck this year. I hope to see you around. Um, yeah, I wish you the best. So good luck. Hey there, I'm Sydney Hemler from Penn State Harrisburg Women's Soccer and Basketball. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the social media policies with you. So here we go. First off, student athletes are not permitted to create or maintain any social media accounts that in any way represent the Penn State Harrisburg Athletics Department, its programs, or its teams. And most of these teams already have social media accounts anyway, so just go follow them. As an individual, you are responsible for what you post on social media. You are representing your school, your team, and your teammates. To piggyback on that, if evidence indicates that you are in violation of policies in the Penn State Harrisburg Athletics Handbook, 
you will be subject to punishment at the discretion of your head coach and also the athletics administration. Finally, don't forget to go on and follow Penn State Harrisburg on all their social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, like, share, and don't forget to follow. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, if you see me around campus, please don't hesitate to say hi. I'm a very friendly person, I promise. I don't fight, only on the field and court. Um, but <laughs> if you see me, say hi. Hi, my name is Nate Curry. I play for men's basketball here at Penn State Harrisburg. Sports betting is against the NCAA rules and is defined as legal and illegal betting on any sports event, which the NCAA holds a championship event for. Example, the NCAA holds a college football championship, therefore betting on an NFL game is prohibited. Any fantasy league or March Madness bracket pool that require gambling are prohibited, as it is against the NC rules to win money for a wager that requires you to enter with any money. You can enter a free entry fantasy league bracket pool and win a money prize. Basically, if it's free to enter, you're good to go. It's college, make sure you enjoy your years and have fun, but also stay focused. I'm glad for all you guys, new freshmen, coming to us, and I hope you guys enjoy your year. Hi, my name is Chase Smith, and I'm a rising senior kinesiology major and baseball player here at Penn State Harrisburg. To maintain full-time status with financial aid, students must earn an F, meaning you have to take 12 credits and participate in all classes. If you get an F because you stopped going to class, taking tests, or doing your classwork, financial aid will adjust your status to part-time student and you will be responsible for more of your tuition because you will no longer be considered a full-time student. It is imperative that you contact the financial aid office to make sure that your financial aid is in order and verification is complete. The Student Athlete Advisory Committee is a great group to be involved with on campus. With SAC, you can represent your team and be involved with planning how to make athletics and campus better for the student athlete experience. I wish you all the best of luck in your athletic and academic journey here at Penn State Harrisburg and I hope to see you all around. Hello everybody, my name is Oscar Cartagena. I used to play for the Penn State Harrisburg men's soccer team. I was senior captain last year and welcome to Penn State Harrisburg. What I really want to talk to you guys about is why you should always check your email for the Penn State Harrisburg Athletics. Well, I encourage you guys to stay one with the community, understand what is going on. I really highly encourage you to always check your email because you will always receive some mail from, from our sports information director and he will inform you of awesome events such as basic uh, game day info, maybe times where sports teams get together and you can volunteer. It's just a good way to be part of the community. Aside from that, if you're also an athlete, very important to check your email. Why? Because maybe you have training in a specific pitch and then all of a sudden, last minute, it's changed to a different pitch. You don't want to be late. So I highly encourage you to also follow Penn State Harrisburg Athletics on all social media platforms. Why? Because you're active, you'll know what's going on in the community. You'll see what other sports are, are, are doing and what it makes them so successful. There's so many amazing sports. And let me tell you, as the years gone by, I've been here for four years, going on in my fifth, the sports teams are only getting better and better. Hopefully you guys enjoy this new year. As long as you're engaged with the community, it'll work out. Hey guys, my name's Abby. I'm a senior on the women's tennis team here at Penn State Harrisburg, and I'm gonna run, things, <laughs> run some things by you. The Office of Student Conduct handles conduct issues on and off campus. The athletic department can hand down its own sanctions independent of the office's findings. If you ever need to reach out to someone, reach out to Robert C. Armstrong, who is the athletic contact for the Office of Student Conduct. Also, hazing is not tolerated at Penn State. It is against NCAA rules, and if found guilty of hazing, criminal charges can be brought against you, the perpetrator. I hope you guys have a great first semester at Penn State, and I can't wait to see you on campus. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Duncan. I'm the Associate Athletic Director here at Penn State Harrisburg. Uh, my main responsibility is compliance. So if you have any questions about eligibility or NCAA rules, I'm definitely the person that you want to talk to. Hope you have a great year. See you soon. So what is the NCAA? 
and where do you fit into it as a Division III student athlete? You might be surprised to find out that your voice matters. When I first arrived on campus, I thought the NCAA was just an office that organized the championships and made the rules we had to follow. But I've learned the NCAA is three divisions of over 1,100 colleges, universities, and conferences, and 460,000 student athletes. So in reality, the NCAA is all of us, especially the student athletes. That's why it's so important that you know your voice matters. Division three is the largest of the three NCAA divisions with 450 schools and 183,000 student athletes. It's the mission of Division III to have an environment where athletics are an integral part of the educational experience. So who makes decisions in Division III to help us stay in line with this philosophy? Well, the Division III governance structure is made up of several committees that create legislation, organize championships, manage the finances, and oversee all other aspects of the division. Student athlete representatives play a huge role on almost every single committee, ensuring that our voice is a part of the decision-making process. By having student athlete representation on these committees, Division Three is making it clear that your voice matters. We get it. It's easy to say your voice matters on these committees in Division Three and the NCAA. But I'm sure you're thinking, if my voice matters, how is it heard? Well, let us show you how the flow of information works and how you can get involved. First, let's talk about the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, or SAC. SAC is a group of student athletes who come together and enhance the total experience by promoting opportunity, protecting student athlete welfare, and fostering a positive image while maintaining the tenets of the Division III philosophy. SAC exists at three different levels, campus, conference, and national. A campus SAC is meant to serve student athletes on the local level. In other words, the issues or concerns on a specific campus. During their regular meetings, campus SACs discuss issues that affect student athletes at the conference and national levels, as well as organize or assist in the planning of community service events and serve as leaders for the entire campus community. Conference SACs are typically made up of members from each school in a conference and meet around two times per year. At conference SAC meetings, student athletes can voice their opinions on potential legislation, discuss broader student athlete well-being issues affecting the conference, and organize conference community service initiatives. Finally, Division III National SAC is comprised of 22 student athletes, each representing their own conference as well as a partner conference. After collecting feedback from institutions and conferences, National SAC members represent student athletes on the floor at the NCAA convention where rules are voted on by the Division III membership. National SAC also champions other initiatives like the You Can Play Project, the It's On Us campaign, and the Division III Special Olympics Partnership. Essentially, the communication cycle goes from Campus SAC to Conference SAC to National SAC and back. Along with the committee's representation, this communication cycle ensures that you, as a student athlete, have a way to voice your opinions. Because as a Division III student athlete, your voice matters. The student athlete voice isn't just important. It is essential to the success of Division III and the NCAA. Division III student athletes have had a voice dating back to the creation of the division. And that voice is as important as ever today. Each one of you has the potential to make a difference. Make sure your voice is heard by getting involved, whether it is with the SAC at the campus, conference or national level, at practice with your teammates and coaches, in the athletics department with your administrators, in the classroom with your peers and faculty, and in the community. Congratulations on being a Division III student athlete, and remember, your voice matters! Hi, my name is Kendis Butler, and I'm part of the women's basketball team at Penn State Harrisburg. The Student Athlete Handbook is your contract with the Athletic Department. It contains team rules and Athletic Department policies that you agree to adhere to and abide by when becoming a student athlete at Penn State Harrisburg. As a part of being a student athlete at Penn State Harrisburg, here's a list of 10 core principles to help guide you during your career. Take pride in all that you do during your time at Penn State Harrisburg. Academics are your number one responsibility. Student athletes need to be coachable in order to reach their full potential. Be confident in your preparation and ability. 
Show your spirit by supporting your teammates and fellow student athletes by attending Penn State Harrisburg games and events. Remain disciplined. Be on time, sacrifice when need be, take care of your business. Be accountable. Work hard without making excuses. Mental toughness and mental health is just as important as your physical well-being. Be a leader and set an example by doing what's right. Display honor and integrity in all things, even when no one's watching. Good luck this year, stay safe and stay healthy. As the athletic director, I wanna wish you the very best in the classroom and on the field of play. Always remember to represent our college with pride, spirit, and honor, and never forget that we are Penn State.